Hello everyone and welcome to our video on for section 11.3 on tangent lines and the big D word, the derivative. Uh, our skill objectives for this video are one, use limits to find the slope of a tangent line at a point. Number two, use limits to find the derivative of a function. And number three, find the instantaneous rate of change of a function. Conceptual objectives on this one. Number one, understand that the slope of the tangent line to a graph of a function is equal to the value of the derivative of the function at that point. And the second one, understand that the derivative of a function at a point is the instantaneous rate of change at that point. In other words, from all of this, is when we do all of these up here, we are actually doing the same thing. The derivative is the slope of the curve. It's the slope of the tangent line. It is the instantaneous rate of change. Let's start out by taking a look at a tangent line. A tangent line to a curve at a point is a line that just touches the curve at a single point as long as you are in the vicinity of that point. Now when we talk about a curve, it's one thing that's important to remember when you're looking at a curve. When we deal with slope, you've always associated slope with lines because lines have a constant slope. Curves they're, they do have slope as well. It does make sense to talk about the slope of a curve. What you have to remember is that a curve has slopes that are always changing. It's not constant. When we look at this parabola here, we can see we are rising quickly here. So our slope would be a bigger positive number and it's starting to get smaller here. It's still rising, but it's not as quick. So this, this slope here of the curve at this point is going to be a little bit smaller than the slope of the curve here. When we're level, we have a horizontal tangent line, uh, and when we have that, the slope of that curve is actually zero. When the, when the curve is decreasing, we can say that in this case, this has a negative slope, it is uh, falling. And as we get over here, it's falling faster. So again, as we saw over here and here, this slope here is going to be, it'll be negative, but it'll be closer to zero than this one here, where it's actually going to be falling faster. Now, when we talk about the tangent the slope of the curve, we are also talking about that slope of the curve is also equal to the slope of the tangent line. So slope of the curve equals the slope of that tangent line. Now the other thing you have with this, and, and this is another thing you have to keep in mind, when we say a tangent line, that's where this part of the definition, the vicinity of the point comes into play. When we talk about a tangent line, I can have a curve that does this. Well, my tangent line to this curve at, let's say, that point, let's say I can draw something here, is going to be this. Well, in this case, it is just touching here, but it does cross here. When we talk about a tangent line, it just has to be in a vicinity of that point of tangency. It has to just touch. As you go further out, it can cross the curve again. What we have to do now is come up with how do we go about finding this slope of the, the, the curve or the slope of that tangent line. Well, what we do with this is we're going to start out with a, a line that intersects this curve at two spots. The black curve there is y equals f of x, and I have two points here. At a, I have this point a, f of a, and at x, I have x, f of x. Now, when we look at this line here, this line that we have in blue, that goes through these two points, and we know that we can find the slope of a of a line by just taking the change in y over change in x. So this line here in blue, it is called a secant line. And the slope of that secant line is going to be f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Now the way we go about finding the tangent line is as I move x closer to a, in other words, we're going to be looking at a limit. As I move, as x goes closer and closer to a, this point here is going to move down closer and closer to here. And the, the, 
the line, the secant line, is going to get closer and closer to a tangent line. And so what we have with this is that the slope of that tangent line is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And once we now have that slope of that tangent line, we can also be asked to go and find the equation of the tangent line. You might remember we have the point slope form of a line where it was y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So in this case, x1 and y1 will represent the point of tangency. And m equals the slope of the tangent line. And from now on, as we move forward, we, instead of writing m sub tan, we will write m. So again, what we have here is we're looking at that a tangent line is going to be given through a point a f of a, and its slope is going to be the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. For example, we want to find the slope of the tangent line to f of x equal to x squared minus 7x plus 7 at the point negative 1, 12. So what I have to do on that one, in this case, a is negative 1. And so coming up here using this definition for that slope, I know m is going to be the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, which is x squared minus 7x plus 4, minus the 12, all over x minus a negative 1. So now combining all the like terms, simplifying that, that becomes the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x squared minus 7x minus 8 over x plus 1. And now what I have to do is factor this. And I can factor that. I need It's going to be x and x. I need two numbers that will multiply to be negative 8 and add to negative 7. Well, that's negative 8 and positive 1. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x minus 8 times x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now at this point, these two will drop off. So this is now just the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x minus 8. Well, we can now just do this one by our substitution, which we did in the last section. So this does come out to be negative 9. And so therefore, my tangent line, remember, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, is going to be y minus 12 equals negative 9 times x plus 1. What you want to do right now is make sure that you are comfortable with everything I did in this problem. If you have any questions, pause the video, look that over. If you have any questions, make sure you star it and make sure to ask about it in our next class. Now, another thing you're going to see in terms of finding the, uh, the slope of the tangent line is going to be this version here, that the slope of the tangent line is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Now this right here should look pretty familiar to you because it's very similar to the problems that we were doing before in the last section where we had to take the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But what we can do with this, we can find the slope of that tangent line. We can say, I want to, I'm going to let f of x equal x squared minus 3x, and I'm going to go at the point 2, negative 2. Well, in this case, I don't have to worry about uh, you know, what x is happening with x. I'm just looking as h approaches 0. So I know a in this case is a 2. That's the x coordinate there. So m is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h. Now if f of 2 plus h, I find that by replacing the x's with 2 plus h. So this is now the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h, that quantity squared, minus 3 times 2 plus h, minus f of 2, which we know is negative 2. Multiplying this out, this becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 6 minus 3h plus 2 over h. Combining all the like terms, this becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of h plus h squared over h 
pulling out the factor and then reducing, that drops off. This is now the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 plus h. And as h goes to 0 again by doing our substitution, that comes out to be 1. So in this case, I know at the point 2, negative 2, my tangent line is going to have a slope of 1. And again, if I want to find that, that tangent line, I know my point of tangency is 2, negative 2. So it's going to be y minus the negative 2 equals 1 times x minus 2. Simplifying, I get y plus 2 equals x minus 2. And if I go and subtract the 2 from both sides, I get y equals x minus 4. Again, as with the previous one, make sure you pause the video and you are comfortable with the calculations that I've done on this one. And if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the next class. Now we get to the idea of the derivative. We know from what we, are pre what we just dealt with that the slope of the tangent line at the point x, f of x, using that last formula that we had, is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This limit is also called the derivative. And what we use, so this is derivative. And the way we denote the derivative, instead of using m, we use what's called, we, one of the notations we have is what's f prime of x. f with a little slash right there of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That is the derivative. And when we evaluate that, yes, you, you know, what you saw previously in the previous assignment, you saw that you would end up with things with x here. That is okay because what you have is actually a derivative function. And that derivative function uh, that you get from this, you can actually calculate the slope of the curve at any point that you choose to look at. The other thing we have is uh, what we dealt with is the idea that this right here, the slope of the tangent line was equal to that, and that is also known as f prime of a. So I have f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. This one is useful if you happen to know the uh, the point of tangency you're working with because you can use that. This, uh, that's why some people like this one. It also works with numbers a little bit more. This one right here, this is good for in general. This one will work for any point that you happen to go and choose. So once you find this derivative, uh, you can go and um, plug in different values for x and you could then go and calculate the slope of the curve or the slope of the tangent line at any given point. Let's just refer, take a look at an example. Then this one is uh, going to be uh, similar to the problems that some of the problems you did in your homework. In this case, uh, from, from 11.2, we want to find f prime of x for f of x equal to 3x squared minus 5. Well, I know the definition of the derivative. f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So f of x plus h, I get that by replacing the variable here with x plus h. I'm going to get 3 times the x plus h squared minus 5 minus f of x, which is 3x squared minus 5, all over h. Now, I do have to multiply this out, so x plus h squared, that's going to now become the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5 minus that quantity of 3x minus 5. Distributing the 3 and that negative sign right there, I now get the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5 minus 3x squared plus 5, and that whole thing is over h. And now again, at this point, the minus 3x squared and the 3x squared cancel each other out, and the minus 5 and plus 5 do the same thing. And now I'm left with just the limit as h approaches 0 of 6xh plus 3h squared over h, pulling out the common factor, and then reducing that fraction this is now the limit as h approaches 0 of 6x plus 3h, 
which equals 3x. And so I would say that f prime of x in this case is 6x. So if I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line when x at x equals 1, I could put 1 in here and I know the slope of that tangent line is 6. If I need the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 4, I put at negative 4 in for x and I know that tangent line is going to have a slope of negative 24. If I wanted the slope of the tangent line at x equals uh, 12, I put 12 in for x and I would get 6 times 12 which is 72. So the slope of my tangent line there would be equal to 72. That's what this derivative of the function gives you. It gives you a way to calculate the slope of the tangent line or slope of the curve at any given point. Now one of the other things you have with this is that you do have uh, when you're talking about the slope of the curve, the slope of the tangent line, you do have what's called the instantaneous rate of change. The way that instantaneous rate of change works is this. If I tell you I'm starting from, from point A and I drive to point B, and I drive, and the A for the distance from A to B is exactly 60 miles, and I do it in exactly one hour, you would tell me, you would probably tell me that I am traveling at 60 miles per hour. And that would be the case in terms of that's the, what's called the average rate of change. But am I always traveling at 60 miles per hour? The answer is no on that. There are times when I'm going faster, there's times I'm going to be going slower. And the instantaneous rate of change really looks at what's happening at that instant. How, is our variable, how are my variables changing at that particular instant? And that instantaneous rate of change is also the derivative. So if in this case, I want to find the instantaneous rate of change of f of x, which equals uh, 4x minus uh, 3x squared at x equals 2. And so what I'm really doing is I'm being asked to find f prime of 2. So f of 2, I plug 2 in, I get that, that equals negative 4. And I know f prime of 2 is going to be the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x minus f of 2 over x minus 2. Putting the 4 minus, 4x minus 3x squared in for f of x minus the negative 4 that I have for f of 2 all over x minus 2. Simplifying that, I get negative, uh, that's the limit as x approaches 2 of negative 3x squared plus 4x plus 4 over x minus 2. Pulling out the factor on that. When I factor that, uh, that is going to be negative 3x minus 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. Again, I reduce those fractions, and I get now that we have the limit as x approaches 2 of negative 3x minus 2. And when I plug the 2 in, negative 3 times 2 minus 2 gives me negative 8. So in this case, I know f prime of 2 is negative 8, and so therefore my, the instantaneous rate of change of the curve at x equals 2 is negative 8. So really what you have to keep in mind, the derivative of a function at a point represents three different things. It does represent the slope of the curve at that point. It does represent the slope of the tangent line at that point. And it does represent the instantaneous rate of change at that particular point. So with this, we are now going to conclude this video. Uh, I hope, again, that you have gone through, make sure that you are comfortable with the calculations that we've done, that I've done in this video. We will do a couple more examples to make sure everybody's on the same page in class. But uh, with that, make sure you write down any of your questions that you have, and we will see you at our next class.